All right, Steamer Joe here on a Monday morning. Getting ready to do some assembly on the Sirius steam engine. I've finished just about all the machining. I still have the breather tube and the dipstick fitting to make, but <clears throat> other than that, I think I've got everything complete. I spent uh, yesterday prepping the castings and painting them. So today I think it'll be uh, the first of a, a short series of videos uh, on the assembly process, which will also give everybody a real good look at all the parts that go into this uh, neat little Stuart engine. So we'll focus in on the bench. I'm going to start by getting the masking off of the parts that I painted. You notice this, this head looks real dull, flat. Well, I painted it with some barbecue paint supposed to withstand 1200 degrees and just as an aside <clears throat> this is a a slide valve throttle that I made many many years ago it uh, controlled the throttle on the Stuart 10 V that I had in a, a boat but what I wanted to show, this is a steel uh, valve body. It's just a slide valve inside. But I wanted you to see the color of that. That was what the steam did. And I don't know, that's probably... Well, you guys that do a lot of heat treat can tell better, but probably at least 450 to 550 degrees to turn that color so and the head is going to be the hottest part of the of the engine so I used that barbecue black just because I didn't want, want paint to come to bubble off of this in operation. I don't know, it's not very pretty not being glossy, but I'll see what happens when I run it. The, uh, the boiler that got that slide valve so hot, the Scott boiler that I built many years ago, but I rebuilt that boiler uh, just a few years back. And uh, improved it, and it has a a healthy superheater, and it's more than just a dryer. It actually provides uh, a level of superheat. Well, you can tell that by the color of that valve, and uh, so that's the boiler that I'll demonstrate this engine on. Uh, once I get it all complete. This box bed is uh, aluminum. I got real creative with the color. That special black color. But it ought to be fine. 
And I'm gonna, as I assemble this, uh, the, the engine uses rings, two rings per piston. And I've actually run the engine on air here on the bench for, well, I couldn't, I just couldn't wait to see if the darn thing was gonna run, and it, it ran extremely well. But I didn't, I didn't use the rings. The pistons are a very close fit in the block, about, you know, maybe seven ten thousandths smaller than the cylinder bores. Uh, since they're cast iron, and I don't think I'll run into any any kind of binding issues or anything, but uh, and they fit so closely, and of course I kept it slathered with oil, that the I noticed no blow by. I actually uh, picked it up with 60 pounds of air on it. Well, actually, I, I couldn't hold the flywheel with 60 pounds of air. I think I, I think I used about 30 pounds. Held the flywheel with the piston halfway down the stroke. Looked at it from the bottom side, and uh, I could see no bubbling of the. air bubbles coming out around the piston so they actually sealed very well and the engine runs uh, even though everything in the engine is held to extremely close tolerances and I spent days on some of it assuring that uh, it just ticked over so smoothly and I had the cylinders lapped and the pistons uh, very smooth so and I'm kind of anxious to see, when I put those rings in there, if it's going to be able to tick over as slowly as it did with the, the pistons without the rings. Uh, I really don't know what to expect. Now I did, I modified my Stuart 10B uh, not too long ago. I built a power plant for a RC boat using that engine and uh, because I knew of the how high the, the temperatures got and that that engine only has a, a bronze piston so I built rings for it they're only it's only three quarter inch bore but I made some rings that was kind of an interesting project in itself cast iron rings and uh, it worked out quite well and but it, it definitely had more friction when you turned it over by hand than when it was uh, just running with the bronze piston in the engine it had some graphite packing in there which didn't last too well so, at any rate, this is going to be the final assembly in this uh, series of videos, so I will install those rings and see how they work. had some. These, these other two little plugs I'm going to remove now were, uh, they're threaded 3 16th 40, they're in the drain cock holes. Just, I had used them as plugs when I was running it in on air and they made pretty good masking plugs too. So, I didn't mask these, this is where the, the dipstick and the breather cap go, and 
and uh, they're reamed 3 8 inch holes. I'll probably clear some of the, you know, paint out of the bores, but the little dipstick and breather cap are just kind of a spring fit in the hole, so uh, they don't really hold any pressure or anything. So, Well, got the parts unmasked. The base that the box bed bolts to is still drying, as is the flywheel. I, <clears throat> it's a cast iron flywheel, and I polished it. Almost all serious engines you see just have a polished uh, cast iron flywheel. But I so hate rust. I don't know. I, I painted it just to protect it from rust. It'll be easy to remove it if I decide later that I do want to just run it polished because I, I do like the appearance of the bright flywheel. But. Well, that'll be it for this part. I'll come back uh, when I get ready to do some more of the assembly.